All right, so I've got a perfectly working switch, and uh, let's see if we can't mess that up. Um, so just for uh, just for calibration, I guess this is this is a uh, release model switch, um, 2017-ish, maybe early 2018. I don't remember. It is a unpatched V1 though. Um, doesn't matter what it says on the back, this isn't the original back, but just for uh, context there, it's an XAW unit. Um, but anyway, I'm going to see if I can't swap out the screen on this bad boy. Uh, so for context with what I'm doing, there are two different types of screen assemblies, I guess. Um, the switch uses a uh, combination screen digitizer assembly where the LCD itself is joined to the digitizer, but there is an air gap between the digitizer itself and the screen. And you can tell by, um, well, mine has a glass screen protector on it, so it's a little bit less flexible than they normally are. But you can tell because you can you can press it down and then the digitizer indents a little bit before it actually makes contact with the screen. Um, alternatively, there's something like, you know, your smartphone where the digitizer itself is like laminated to the screen. Um, usually that's preferable because it results in much better visual fidelity. Uh, more uh, better effective brightness and by the way this is as bright as these things get it's all the way up it ain't great my desk isn't particularly bright but you know I mean I, I can kill my filming lights and it gets it's usable but it's not what I would call bright uh, but anyway yeah Lamination helps with a lot of those problems. The downside, of course, is cost. It is more expensive to have a laminated display. Also, when it comes down to repairs, it means if either the digitizer or the screen breaks, you gotta replace both. Whereas on the Switch, even though they are assembled like one unit, you can separate them. Uh, it's just a little adhesive ring holding the LCD onto the digitizer. Uh, so, for example, since the Switch has a plastic digitizer if that were to get messed up you know scratched or something you can just replace the digitizer without having to replace the whole LCD however I have found recently that they make laminated screens for the switch now unfortunately they come with plastic digitizers and not glass digitizers and I know they make glass digitizers I just haven't been able to find both um, and I don't have the means to do it myself, so I had to order what, what they what they sent. But anyway, this should result in a much better appearance. Unfortunately, it's not quite straightforward to swap the screens out on this thing. But I figure since the screen's coming out, anyway, we can swap out the front bezel on this thing. Um, it's impossible to swap out the front bezel without pulling the screen off because there are screws under the bezel. I didn't know about until getting into this thing, but um, I was hoping I could go in all sneaky beaky like and just pop this off as one assembly and save it for something. But unfortunately, I'm not gonna get that lucky. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing torn apart. Now, just Another point of reference, you can see off, the screens look quite a bit different. This one looks a little bit lighter because of that air gap, whereas this one looks darker because there is no air gap. I think it'll look quite a bit better when it's on, but I only have one switch, so I can't demo that. I mean, I have a switch light, but it's not quite the same thing. Set that aside. I don't think I need to empty out the game cart slot, but what the hell, why not? So I am going to tear this down to the best of my abilities, and then we'll go from there. 
No idea how long this is going to take me, but I am not intimately familiar with the switch to the point where I can say, oh yeah, I'll have this torn down in 15 minutes. Nah. This is going to be a multi-hour long experience, I think. I mean, I have had this thing apart several times. Especially when I swapped out the back plate. Swapping out the back plate on these things is real easy. And if you're looking for a guide to repair your switch, can't really recommend anything. I'm not. I'm not familiar enough with the hardware to offer recommendations like that. Uh, I know Tronics Fix does a lot of switch videos, and I know iFixit has some pretty good teardowns, which is what I'm going to be following for the most part. I think we can skip a lot of that, though. I don't, I don't know how deep we need to get in. Also, I am just now discovering this dent in my fascia bezel that I didn't know about. So that's cool. At least we're replacing that. Alright, so from here, we want to do a couple things. First thing, before messing with anything else, we're going to go ahead and pop the battery out. Disconnect that. And people were telling me my switch was bent because of my battery. No, my battery is perfectly flat. Not saying it's healthy, but at least it ain't bloating. Um, and then from here, I think we want to try out the new screen, which shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, I suppose I mentioned this before we get too much further. As of Right now, this very second, uh, September 18, 2021, the original Switch model has two different LCDs. Uh, you need to, as far as I'm aware, according to the listing I bought this from, uh, you need to make sure that your Switch model matches up with the LCD you're trying to buy. Um, there's V1 and V2. I don't know the difference. I don't know if there's any cross compatibility. The listings seem to imply that there is not, so take that how you will. Um, within the next few months, there is going to be yet another screen revision. Um, it should be pretty obvious the difference between the screen revisions though with the OLED model. There's got to be a way to tuck that out of the way. Okay. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think I can get this cable out of the way. At least not without removing that. Let me see if that's, if that's possible. I don't know if we can get that out without removing that. It should be possible. All right, well, I can't find what I was looking for, and uh, I don't think it's going to work too well regardless, so we'll just leave it for now. Um, normally, I'd like to uh, test the screen before just ripping this thing apart, but it's not a whole lot I can do. Uh, there's too much stuff in the way. And I, you know, I know from uh, Game Boy modding that we want to test it beforehand, but 
think we're kind of SOL on that point. I'm going to go ahead and pop the NAND module off for now. This is actually upgraded. This is not the original one to this device. I have upgraded that. I have 64 gigabytes before the uh, new one comes out. I think I can get away with popping the screen out without fully disassembling this thing, though. Let's find out. I'm going to need to go in from this side. Yeah. I am going to get thermal paste everywhere if I don't do that. Or I could just clean it up the proper way, but... Okay, hot air time, I am going to set it from 400 degrees down to like 140 should be good. And I will need spudgers, lots and lots of spudgers. Okay, I found one spudger. Okay, I found a second spudger. Should be good enough. All right, here goes nothing. I'm gonna start with this side. I'm gonna get it nice and toasty and then I'm gonna jam my spudger in and hope for the best. I'm also going to leave the uh, glass digitizer on, uh, hoping that, or the screen protector, not digitizer, hoping that the glass screen protector adds a little bit of rigidity, rigidity to the screen and allows me to extract it in one piece. If I break this, it's not the end of the world, but, you know, all things considered, it is a perfectly fine screen, so kind of like to not do that if I can. This thing's got so much thermal mass it's not even heating up. Might have to crank the hot air higher. Try more heat. It's just under 200 now. Weather. There's no way. Part of the problem is that it's impractical. So get under the screen protector, not under the screen itself. What if we use a C-Holter engine? Yeah, sorry. Kind of. I have to ruin the screen protector, but... Oh, no. 
It's actually much better to open this organized All right, so current thought process is that should just slip right out, right? Or am I about to rip this? Again, not the end of the world, but... Oh yeah, no, that just slips right out. I do that. Oh, that was dumb. I set it right down on top of the digitizer, except perpendicular, and the adhesive grabbed it. Alright, so that'll go in something like that. Let's feed in. This. Ah, I see. No doubt this would be made significantly easier if I removed this heat sink and cart reader. That's what I'm going to have to do to continue. Alright. So be it. Let's swap the frame out anyhow. Alright, so here is the new frame. I ordered this from Extreme Rate. This is not sponsored. I just happen to want one. Uh, comes with all these goodies, new buttons, screwdrivers, a whole crap ton of screws, and a broken suction cup. Nice. Good job, Extreme Rate. 
was a little bit more than I wanted to spend, but I also wanted to get this done as soon as I could. So, yeah, it looks like we need to pull the rails off. Interesting turn of events. The screw holes do not line up at all. I don't know what that's about. Take a look here. Oh, they do line up. I'm just being dumb. Okay, I was concerned. Clearly not concerned enough to stop, but concerned nonetheless. Cool, time for reassembly. At least enough to test it and then I'll have to do something about that. Uh, wow, that is totally dry. I guess it's time to repaste this thing. I'm guessing there's more paste underneath. Have it open, might as well. Not that this console has heat problems, but it does get somewhat warm. It's kind of obvious why, looking at this close up. I also do not recommend removing this. This was a terrible idea. 
so I was continuing with that idea. <laughs> This side. There we go. There we go. Ooh, I'm almost had a cut and swell. Probably not explicitly necessary, but I did have the switch open. I'd be lying if I said I'd come back and do this later. What's interesting to me is this is not a very smooth die. Usually these things are like mirror polished. It's not the case here. I don't know what Nvidia or Nintendo did. But a rough surface is much worse than a smooth surface when it comes to heat transfer. I'm going to pause for a few minutes and, uh, oh no, just kidding. I'm basically done. There's still a bunch between the little capacitors and stuff, but. Other than resolving obsessive compulsive tendencies, there's no real point in cleaning that out that much. But I cleaned it anyway. Alright. So it looks like. Removing this shielding was probably not the best idea, uh, but it's where we're at right now anyway. Um, could have just peeled up the copper shim. But now I have to sit here and straighten out all these little tabs so I can put it back down. I'm just squeezing the pliers to find out what we should get in a second. I wonder if there are aftermarket heat sinks or something I could throw on this thing that replaces this stupid little copper shim with something that would have direct contact the heat pipe I believe it is done the way it is um, not, not because it's efficient it's clearly not the most efficient way to do this but I suspect for reliability because the chip doesn't get that hot Like, sure, it'll get toasty at times, but realistically, it's only, what, like a 15-watt chipset or something? Even less if you're not running it docked. I 
don't even think that's bare copper. That or the old um, thermal interface material has just ruined it. All right. This stuff I don't take out of the bag. I handle it entirely within the bag because for some reason it is just messy and I don't want to get any of that mess on me. And I guess I'm using the very last of it. Hopefully that's enough. Should be fine. white stuff on there is what I applied last time I had this thing open. And it is still very fresh. enough that I probably could have just left it. Not only could have, but probably should have. All right, I'm not gonna bother repasting this side because we're gonna test it without paste just in case I need to pull it apart. Um, gonna reassemble this. I should unstick this tape first. deep in there. Alright, there we go. Saw backlight. Didn't see anything else though. Uh oh. It's on, but there's nothing on the screen.
Ah, okay, it just wasn't seated. Ho oh, oh. ho! I feel so much better. Touch screen works, that's it's a pro. Uh shish It's not in system, is it? Nope. Controllers and sensors. Test input devices, test touch screen. Good news is touch screen works perfectly. So does the rail and that rail. Let's try Baldur's Gate. Should boot right up. And we're on max brightness still. The screen does look heaps better. Ooh. I don't know how easy it is to compare, but if nothing else, you know, the viewing angles are a little bit better. I uh, probably should have showed that off before ripping the old screen out, but. New screen seems to work nicely. At least I got that going for me. Cool, cool, cool. Let's continue the assembly. Right, so I need to, for sure, stick this thing down. I can't have it keep flopping up at me. Um, I didn't even screw the front faceplate on, so I'm sitting here going, what the hell are these four screws for? Well, that's, that's what they're for. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now let's get this thing stuck down. I'm fairly certain you can just purchase um, like the OEM adhesive gasket. Um, I'm not gonna, you know what? I could very easily just reuse this. Maybe I should. Nah. I should have thought about that before putting the screen in. I did this in like the worst possible order. All right. I guess I am going to use the good stuff because it's YOLO. This is 3, uh, 3M 300 LSE. Act legit 3M 300 LSE, which is kind of expensive. Not really. The expensive part is if you don't order it through certain channels, you get um, counterfeit stuff, which isn't as sticky. It still works as well, I guess. But. Now the problem is, I think, I'm going to have to slice that into thirds, yeah. And I'm just going to have it holding on three sides.
highly recommend getting the pre-cut stuff. Down this side, yeah. Cut it down again. Drop that in. All right. Before sticking that down, I'm going to finish reassembly and then do one final test. I might have storage. I think we're good. Both these are working. Should we come around to check? I don't know what else we should check. Ah, it appears to be working. Ta da! Alright, let's go. Last step here. Head back. Let's go to the studio. Actually lost my save game on this, so yeah, 27 seconds. Woo! Uh, I don't think I can fire up both at the same time, at least in a game. But we can look at the main menus there, put them side by side. Um, I don't think. Oh no, it is at full brightness. 
It's kind of weird. Uh, Nintendo's last light console was significantly brighter than the predecessor, but I think in the case of the Switch Lite, uh, the light leans more towards we skimped on features rather than we increased the brightness of the light. Um, I mean, they, they look pretty darn similar. This is also not a laminated display. Is it gonna let me do it? I don't think it's gonna let me do it. Oh, I don't think it's supposed to let me do that. But screw it, we'll go for it. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> Actually, no, we can, we can fire that up. So yeah, there's that one. I suppose I'll kill some lights here. Nice fair amount of glare. You can see everything though, it's not too bad. Uh, again, this is max brightness. This one. Pretty similar. Pretty similar. Um, can see everything just fine. It says max brightness. Uh, go down. Of course, I don't know why anyone would ever use their switch down there unless they're like literally in a pitch black room and you know hiding under the covers or something. Come on. But there you have it. I I do notice an improvement, but not not significant. It's very very not significant. The biggest improvement I see is that the LCD itself is much closer to the viewing window. So if you if you look at the corners, like you can see, you know, the LCD is like right up up against the glass. There's no weird gap. It does look better, I think. Whereas if we look at this thing, let's compare those on the same screen. You can see if we look up at the corner, it's like right up against the glass. Whereas if we look at this one, which is constructed the same way, but also not laminated because it's perfectly stock. You can see it's close, but there is a gap. I don't know, it's 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 a lot easier to see in person, I think. Uh, if I turn this light on, will that help? No, not really. But if my camera were to focus, You'd be able to see there's this little gap of gray between the screen and the digitizer, and there's that's the little adhesive layer that we saw on here. There's this very thin foam. Come on, focus on. Stop focusing on the reflection. Come on, you can do it. All right, maybe not, but there is. A little bit of a foam layer, you can see it down by my thumb. There we go. That's the air gap separating the LCD and the digitizer. It has gone on this one, and it does look better. Now, I didn't have to modify the system at all to install this, other than, other than literally what it took to remove the old screen and then install the new screen. Um, so you might be thinking, well, why doesn't Nintendo just do this from the factory then? Cost. It's 100% a cost thing. Um, and I don't just mean they're trying to make a cheaper console. I mean, yeah, de that's definitely a big part of it, that they're trying to make a cheaper console. But another reason would be repair. Nintendo knows they're going to be fixing these things. That's why they made them with plastic digitizers in the first place because if you drop your switch this isn't going to break 
sure it'll scratch easy but this isn't glass it doesn't just break when you drop your switch so this is don't forget primarily a children's toy even if us adults are allowed to play it and have our fun this still had to be designed to be relatively childproof and I'd say they succeeded with that um, so yeah they they knew they're gonna end up replacing digitizers so why pay to replace the screen too when it's not it's not a big part of how the switch works like yes like I said it does provide an improvement is it worth the extra cost not necessarily um, if you're looking to do this to your own switch I mean it's probably not worth it but if you're replacing the front bezel anyway which means you have to pull the screen off anyway um, I think it's probably worth looking into or if you're replacing the screen anyway yeah yeah probably worth looking into because in all honesty the cost it was basically the cost of a bare screen and digitizer uh, the um, the additional cost to have the two laminated together was like five bucks if that uh, so yeah if you're replacing both hell yeah go for it yeah the, I, I see no reason not to I'm I'm hoping to see these with uh, glass digitizer sometime soon uh, I am also hoping to see these with um, is that working I can't tell maybe it's not that quick uh, I'm also hoping to see these uh, for this thing I would have loved to do that to this console instead of the big switch but here we are but yeah I don't know I'm, I'm digging it I think it looks pretty darn good and of course if you're the type that just plays with your switch dock then obviously there's no reason to do this um, also if you're looking at that new OLED model that's coming out pretty soon obviously this won't be compatible with that model I have no idea if that one's going to be laminated I kind of hope it is uh, but at the same time I don't really care because I'm not too interested in that model I was hoping that maybe I could mod my V1 switch into the OLED model but it has a slightly different chassis so I know I'd need the new screen new housing new frame I would basically need everything and then I'd have to hope that my motherboard itself would be swappable but I don't know that's that's a project for uh, for the future I guess in the meantime I think I'm going to uh, actually play this switch now oh no we got to do one more thing let's transfer over the uh, cereal There we go. Now you can't even tell it's been modified. Ooh, that wasn't snapped in properly. <laughs> oh well, it is now. There we go. I'm happy with how that came out. Um, I think I would have liked... I don't know. I, 
That antenna's crooked and it's gonna drive me crazy. I'm gonna have to pop the back plate off and slide it in again. It's, it's seated, it's just not, I don't know. But there you go, everything's working. I managed to not break a single thing, which is a freaking miracle. So the first time having this switch apart, aside from just having the back plate off to swap the uh, NAND chips. But uh, there we go. I'm, I'm very pleased with how this came out. I will throw a link in the description to the screens. Uh, again, as of right now, there are two different hardware revision switches, and according to the listing, you cannot swap the screens between the two. So if you have a V1 switch, which it, you can tell by the serial number, um, then you get the V1 screen. If you have a V2 switch, which I don't think is the Marico units, I don't know. I mean, it might be. Um, I, I don't know if that has any correlation to that. If you have that model switch, you can also tell by your serial number, then you get the V2 screen. They're not the same price, they're within a couple bucks of each other, but close enough. Just make sure you get the right screen. Uh, again, it's not available for the Switch Lite yet, hopefully. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I did enlist some help looking for that, and uh, we were able to locate a Taobao listing where it was a, uh, you know, send us your Switch Lite and we'll send it back to you laminated. And I was like, yeah, that's cool and all, but shipping to China is kind of sketchy on a good day. I don't really want to send them my Switch Lite. And I, you know, I want to do it myself at the end of the day. Um, hopefully someone will start selling pre-laminated modules and then that will do a video on that too. Why the hell not? Uh, but... Oh, I'll also throw a link to the extreme rate housing that I ordered. Um, again, not sponsored. I just kind of wanted to get it done. I wanted to swap it out while I was going to be rooting around in here anyway. Because you can't swap out the front frame without fucking with the screen. And I was already going to have the screen off, so I figured I'd swap that out at the same time. When I started this project, I didn't realize that there were four screws holding it on. I thought we could just leave the screen attached, and then I could save that for, like, another build or something. Uh, I ended up having to pull it off, but I don't think I broke anything, so I'll still save it. Just Quick addendum. When swapping this out, do not forget the ambient light sensor lens, or the speaker grills, both of which I forgot. So that's nice.